Prophet Muhammad has been criticized by non-Muslims and ex-Muslims. He's been called a womanizer. He's been called a lot of different names that I don't even want to say it here. But today I am going to ask Chair GPT, what does she think and she will remain very unbiased. I haven't programmed her in any way. Like a lot of people um, accuse Lily J of programming the chat GPT before she asks her questions. But I have asked her to stay neutral and I'm going to give her some instructions right in front of you. Hey Chair GPT, Prophet Muhammad has been called a womanizer by ex-Muslims and non-Muslims. Can you please use Islamic sources and non-Islamic historical sources and comment on it? The claim that Prophet Muhammad was a womanizer is a perspective held by some critics, but it's important to understand the context of his marriages through both Islamic and non-Islamic historical lenses. Islamic perspective. In Islamic tradition, Muhammad's marriages are seen as part of his role as a leader and a prophet. They served various purposes, including strengthening community ties, providing protection to widows, and exemplifying compassionate treatment of women. Non-Islamic historical perspective, Non-Islamic historians often analyze his marriages in the context of 7th century Arabian society. Marriages at that time were often strategic, forming alliances and ensuring tribal cohesion. Critics who label him a womanizer may overlook the socio-political and humanitarian reasons behind his marriages. In conclusion, while some critics interpret his multiple marriages through a modern lens, historical and Islamic perspectives provide a more nuanced understanding of his motivations and the societal norms of his time. When I was little, I actually had questions about his character also because of his multiple marriages. However, as I grew older and my brain matured, I started to understand much deeper meaning behind all his actions, including his multiple marriages and his character. Today, I'm getting help from Chad GBT in clearing Prophet Muhammad's name. Can you please again use historical non-Islamic sources and Islamic sources and comment on how Prophet Muhammad picked his wives? Was it based on beauty and age? Was it based on wealth? Or was it based on moral character and compassion? Sure, let's delve into the reasons behind Prophet Muhammad's marriages from both Islamic and non-Islamic perspectives. Islamic sources. Islamic traditions emphasize that Muhammad's marriages were primarily based on moral character, compassion, and social responsibility. His first marriage to Khadija was based on mutual respect and admiration for her integrity and support. Other marriages, such as with Sauda, Hafsa, and Um Salama, were rooted in providing protection and support to widows. The marriage to Aisha, the daughter of a close companion, is seen as strengthening community ties. Non-Islamic historical sources. Non-Islamic historians often view Muhammad's marriages within the socio-political context of 7th century Arabia. Marriages were a means to form alliances and ensure tribal cohesion. While some critics suggest these marriages were for personal pleasure, many historians argue that they were strategic and served broader communal purposes. In summary, both Islamic and non-Islamic sources suggest that Prophet Muhammad's marriages were motivated by factors such as moral character, compassion, social responsibility. Hey Chair GPT, from everything you know, from historical perspective, non-Islamic perspective, from critiques, and from Islamic perspective, and while you remain unbiased, please give me an answer, do you think Prophet Muhammad was a womanizer and please explain your answer uh, why.
From a balanced perspective, considering various sources, calling Prophet Muhammad a womanizer doesn't align with historical and religious contexts. In Islamic tradition, his marriages were for reasons of compassion, social welfare, and community relations. His first marriage to Khadija was monogamous for 25 years, highlighting a deep, respectful partnership. Subsequent marriages occurred for diverse reasons, including providing for widows and strengthening community bonds. Non-Islamic historians often contextualize his marriages within 7th century Arabian norms, where alliances through marriage were common. The critique labeling him as a womanizer seems to oversimplify and misinterpret the historical and religious significance of his actions. Therefore, categorizing him as such doesn't hold up under closer scrutiny. Thank you so much.